today we are going to discuss the most broken Beyblades ever released. Beyblades that some would say were too powerful and should have been nerfed or never even made. These Beyblades dominated their current metagame and made battles almost unfair. The Beyblades I chose to put on this list come in no particular order, and if you think we missed a Beyblade, let us know in the comment section below. Alright, let's get started. First, of course, I'm sure you guys know what Beyblade I'm going to be talking about. It is the most notorious overpowered Beyblade of them all, Sporygan Requiem. I think this was the most hyped Beyblade release ever. <laughs> if you guys watched the Beyblade Burst Evolution anime, you know what I'm talking about. The budget for the episode Spriggan Requiem was revealed in was like 10 times more than the budget for all the other Beyblade episodes combined, and Shu in the anime was a monster, defeating powerful Beyblades and bladers effortlessly. Anyway, just like the anime, Spriggan Requiem in real life did not disappoint. It had a fairly round shape, allowing it to spin for quite a long time, but it also had some decent contact points, allowing it to get some good hits against other Beyblades. Not only that, the layer was heavy compared to other evolution layers due to the metal godship in its center. But the best thing about Spriggan Requiem was its ability to spin both left and right. This combined with the rubber on its layer gave it the ability to steal spin from every Beyblade. In combination with a good life after death driver like Orbit or Bearing, this Beyblade became almost unstoppable. All you had to do was light launch the opposite direction of your opponent, steal spin, and win at life after death. It was an incredibly easy and simple strategy with no real counters at the time. While this was the most popular way to use Spriggan Requiem, many bladers found success using Spriggan Requiem in a plethora of different defense, stamina, and even attack combos. This Beyblade was just extremely versatile, and because of that, it was later banned in English WBO tournaments. Wow, that, that was crazy. Anyway, on to a less obvious overpowered Beyblade. I think a lot of you guys think this Beyblade is garbage, and actually, you know what, L let's turn this into a game. Try to guess what Beyblade I'm going to be talking about next. If you get it right, then congratulations, you, you can have this first edition Shadowless Cheeto NFT card, of, of course, but if you get it wrong, you'll have to subscribe to Left First for your daily dose of Beyblade content. I'll reveal the answer in 3, 2, 1, and the Beyblade we're going to talk about is Maximum Garuda, the banana. Alright, if you got it wrong, subscribe, and to those who got it right, um, here's your Cheeto NFT. Now, you might be wondering, what about Maximum Garuda makes it good, and isn't it that Beyblade that bursts to absolutely everything? And well, yes, it, it does burst to absolutely everything, at least the stock combo does. However, Maximum Garuda has an unintentional design flaw that makes it absolutely busted. Garuda's gimmick was that it was a round, aerodynamic Beyblade with an almost completely smooth surface. This gave Garuda the most stamina in defense in the meta by far. Because of this, Takeratomi had to nerf it hard. They did this by giving him no teeth at all, making him to this day the Beyblade with the least amount of burst resistance, bursting to almost everything. But like I said earlier, there was a design flaw that once the Beyblade community found out about, exploited to no end. A secret to make Maximum Garuda basically unburstable, and that secret was this, an Amol God Chip. As you all might know, every God Beyblade comes with a God Chip. These God Chips, however, were not created equal. If I'm not mistaken, there were three molds, an A mold, a B mold, and a C mold, but don't quote me on that. There may be like a D mold or an E mold. <laughs> I don't think I ever got a D mold or E mold, but they might be out there. Anyway, each of these molds were slightly different. Stock Maximum Garuda came with the C mold god chip, but when you switch it out for an A mold god chip, the Beyblade becomes basically unburstable. These small differences in the mold of the chip doesn't really affect other Beyblades, but it has a massive effect on Maximum Garuda due to its basically horizontal slopes for teeth. Any more pressure added to it makes it just extremely tight. 
Thus, Maximum Gruda gained godly stamina and defense without any drawback at all, making it one of the most powerful Beyblades ever released. Next up, this wouldn't be an overpowered Beyblade list if we didn't talk about the Death Scythers. Single Air Death Scyther and Dark Death Scyther dominated their eras. Just like Spriggan Requiem and Garuda, both these Beyblades had to be banned, and I think in Japan, Single Layer Death Scyther was the first Beyblade layer ever banned. It was the original Spriggan Requiem. Now remember, this was a time before there were Beyblades with rubber on their layer, or metal on their layer, or before crazy gimmicks were introduced. Heck, we didn't even have a left spin Beyblade yet. Our first left spin Beyblade was Lost Longinus. I remember people thinking it would be impossible to have a left spin Beyblade due to the burst gimmick because they just wouldn't burst. Spoilers, solution was just locking the Beyblade the other way and introducing a bunch of left spin Beyblades. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to say was that back then, times were simpler. If you wanted to win, all you had to do was spin a Beyblade for a long time and not burst. And that is what both these Death Scyther Beyblades did best. They had the teeth and burst resistance of an attack type Beyblade, and for some reason Takeratomi gave them an extremely round design, allowing them to spin longer than almost every other Beyblade at the time, longer than defense Beyblades and stamina Beyblades. They had little to no weaknesses, and because of this, they were of course banned, and we never got another OP Death Scyther like them again. On to a somewhat more recent Beyblade. The next Beyblade on this list is going to be Perfect Phoenix. Perfect Phoenix is the result of combining the heavier Revive Phoenix layer with the heavier Dead Phoenix armor, creating an insanely heavy layer. This Beyblade was just a complete right spinning tank. It had solid defense and was probably the best Chosy Beyblade created. Even better than Archer Hercules and Chosy Spurgeon in my opinion. It was so good that it stayed in the competitive scene all through GT. Even as GT was introducing more and more overpowered Beyblades like Lord Spriggan, Judgment Joker, Master Diablos, Perfect Phoenix still played a giant role in the meta and was able to keep up with these crazy hitters. That speaks volumes, and while it was never banned, I still think it deserves a spot on this list. The final Beyblade, or I guess I should say Beyblades, that are going to join this list is, of course, Rage Longness and Guilty Longness. You guys know these monsters, they're so good, even their stock combos win official Beyblade tournaments. I decided to pair them together because they basically do the same thing. They have an extreme amount of metal on their layer because of their metal dragons and can perform the absolute craziest upper attacks ever seen in Beyblade. These two Beyblades tear through other Beyblades like they're nothing. Rage Longinus came out during the Sparking series, and thus was given a chassis to complement its upper attacks. Not only that, the chassis gives the Beyblade a ton of burst resistance, so this thing is hitting hard without the risk of bursting. While Guilty Longinus doesn't have the same chassis or burst resistance, it makes up for it with its insane stature and weight. Because attack types are so unpredictable, both these Beyblades have the potential to win almost every battle they're in, but usually after a couple strong upper attacks, their opponent is left dead on the stadium floor. Alright, that was our list of the most powerful Beyblades ever released. Let me know in the comments if you agree with the list or if there are any Beyblades you thought we missed. There have been over a hundred burst Beyblades released over the years, so we're bound to look over some overpowered ones, specifically like a lot of Spriggans. I decide to only pick Spriggan Requiem, but I know like Chosy Spriggan was amazing, I know like Lord Spriggan was good, and I, I, you guys know what I'm talking about. Anyway, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please consider it because it, it really does help us out. And yeah, um, thank you to Riley for editing this video. Riley edits all my discussion videos. He's amazing. He does a great job. So yeah, see you guys later. Have a nice day. Left first out.